Hi, I'm Grant with Black Rock Galleries, and I'm going to take you on a tour of our full preview auction today. Nakashima, Nakashima, Nakashima. We got lots of lock in Nakashima over here in the building. So if you guys are looking for Nakashima, I'll tell you what, here is your opportunity because you usually have to go to Sotheby's, Christie's uh, to buy the stuff. This is all real. We have the receipts for it. It was all purchased between 1958 and uh, 19. 1980s, I think 85 or 86 was the last one, and uh, it's from a doctor's house in uh, in North Haven. It is all estate fresh, and it is absolutely stunning. The desk here we have uh, the double dresser. The double dresser is awesome because it's got this this beautiful free form edge. Great dovetails, all the stuff. You know, if you guys know anything about his work. He's all known for handcrafting everything made right here in Pennsylvania. You know, this is this is a little the little subtle things that you look at and appreciate, like the way that tendon is made to hold the top chair rail. These vertical styles, if you look at them. They're actually all, they're hand cut. They're not round. They're, they're planed down. Nice saddle seat on this chair. We got that set of four. The bench is not George Nakashima, it's Mira Nakashima, but I'll tell you what, the bench is incredible. Substantial, it's about five or six feet long. It's got one of the Nakashima uh, bow ties over here. It's got a great piece of wood. Over here, we got another Nakashima cabinet with the parchment covered doors, tall chest. We got this pair of cabinets. We got some Nakashima, so if you're in the market for it, come on down. You could come and preview it. You could touch it. You could feel it. You could see what it's all about. And uh, if not, look at our photos and bid online, and I hope you like them. Hey, Bradley. Let's talk about this Burmese Buddha. It's from Valen Galleries, yeah? Yes, it is. It is substantial. It's significant. It's a Ming Dynasty, 14th to 17th century Burmese Thai Buddha. Uh, it's it, he's seated on a lotus throne uh, in, in Shakyamuni pose. Uh, it's, it's got all the stage presence you could possibly want. It's, it's about as fantastic as you're gonna get. It's a big piece. It's substantial. What is that why? Three, four hundred pounds? Three, four hundred pounds. Could somebody, if we threw that in somebody's van, are they going to get it out? No, you're going to probably have to bring some, <laughs> some, some, some serious help to get this out yeah. of the building. But it'll be worthwhile. That's for sure. Yeah. Why, what is this in here? That's old gilding um, that has worn, I, with a 14th to 17th century piece, we're talking about hundreds of years of wear. And to be in this condition, it's it's impressive. All right, so 14th to 17th century. So let's just say it's, let's let's go in the middle. Let's say it's like kind of- 1600s, 15, so, 1600s. So you're saying this piece is like, you know, 500, 600 years old. Six, 700 years old. 600, yeah. seven, wow. That's pretty old, huh? That's pretty old. What happened to the hand? Looks like something missing there. Yeah, we've got, uh, it, it's, it looks like it's it's old. It's certainly not new. Uh, we've got the the last digit of, of all the fingers have been severed. It's, it's something that, you know, with a piece this substantial in, in moving, things can happen. There's a small ding in the, uh, in the back of the Lotus Throne, but it, it, just in terms of condition for a Ming bronze, this is impressive. What do you think it had there? Maybe like an iPod or something? <laughs> <laughs> he could have had a little vase. He, there could have been something little, but it also could have just been his fingers. You know, if I would take this and put it in my, I'd put a Starbucks coffee or something on there. You know, I, I'm not so sure the Buddha like, he, I think he uh, he may prefer Dunkin' Donuts, but you could go Starbucks, sure. How do you know the Buddha's not a she? 
Well, the Guanyin is a Shi. It's it's the interpretation. It's the form, and and this is this is the Shakyamuni Buddha. The sh it seems weird that you put it with the naked painting. <laughs> <laughs> it Bradley. <does> seem, <laughs> it's it's a good dichotomy here. <laughs> All right. Well, if you love this Buddha, and it really is a substantial piece, it's a real piece. It's from Valen Galleries. We know it's got good provenance. You know, it's probably a piece worth considering for your home. We have an exceptional group of paintings down here. And if you wanted to come in and preview and look and see how beautiful they are in person, you could see the walls are absolutely just covered in here in artwork. So let's take a look at what we have over here. We have uh, a John Fabian, and uh, this is a great American painting, beautiful bright colors. We have a couple of Pierre Dubards. There's three of them in the sale. This is, I think, a great example of a Johann Bertelsen Flags of Fifth Avenue in New York. And this one happens to have a really busy uh, bottom to it with cars and people. It's just a stunning painting. It's as close to a Guy Wiggins as you're going to get. Vu Khu Dam, this is a Vietnamese artist. And I love this one because it really reminds me of a Marc Chagall. The colors are so intense and pop in it. Um, the Manalovich, this is a beautiful example of his work. Beautiful winter painting. If you like 18th and 19th century, this painting of George III mounted on a horse is absolutely stunning. This is a favorite. I love the little bunnies. Uh, they're real. They're realistic, but they're so fuzzy in this painting. It feels like you could just pet them. Love it. Estevalle, a good, easy on the eyes painting. Uh, I love this. This is a, a French artist, Torrens, and you know, the quality is so good, it really looks like it could be uh, Winslow Homer or any one of great American Impressionist paintings. The frame is great, the piece is great, it presents well, and uh, there's a nice big Torre. Now the Pierre Dubard. Just a good good collection of uh, easy on the eye artwork this time. A couple more Bertelsons up here. These are little pastels, probably New York. And on this back wall, we got more big, beautiful. All these paintings are large. These are all about 40 inches. But uh, the Sir James Shannon, this one really, it, it's... It's really just about a museum quality painting. You could see it's just about five feet in each direction, but the quality of the workmanship is just, is just great. And she's got that expression that she's, she's darn tired of sitting in this chair. She's ready to get up and go do something else because she's been posing for it all day. Got a Daniel Huntington, another American artist. This painting is, one thing I love about it, there's virtually no restoration to it. It, it hasn't been lined. It's been cleaned, but there's, there's no punctures. There's no holes in it. It's just so hard to find a painting from the 19th century that doesn't have a ton of restoration. The lace work on her arms is, is beautiful. It looks like something that was done in an earlier period, maybe 18th or 17th century. Another nice big painting. We have a Rauschenberg. Lots of nice color. If you're looking for that pop of color on your wall, we have a Peter Max. That's really a fun Peter Max, and it's an older one. Uh, 1983, so you know that there's no question on the provenance, if he really did it or not. They're a great sideboard. If you like English furniture. This one's just a little unusual because it's got this pretty inlaid top. Need a pair of wine coolers. I'll tell you what, for decorating, those are pretty awesome. Philip Laverne table. This one has great color, nice patina to it. For those of you who serve caviar, where are you going to... You've got to have a caviar server. This is Fabergé, 
probably made 20 years ago. And it's all gold-plated bronze with hand-cut and polished crystal. There's a great little table over here. This is, believe it or not, one of my favorites in the sale. Uh, I love these little Apple White style tables. This one is uh, first quarter 19th century, but it's just got the right type of chippy, worn, shabby chic paint on it. Love it. Great looking piece. These are good too. These are probably uh, Colport or Minton. The quality of the paint on these lamps is, uh, is it's about as good as you're gonna get on painted porcelain. And these were probably, originally, they were just uh, urns and then somebody took these beautiful antique urns and they mounted them as lamps later on. But then they used these gorgeous gilt bronze bases and they're, and they're big, you could see just how large they are. Yeah, a little bit of loss to the enamel, but they're, they're, they're so much better looking in person than they are in the photos. A pretty little mahogany table with the bronze mounts. If you need a pop of color, this Suzanne carpet's about as colorful as you're gonna get. Uh, nice harese. This Nakashima daybed. This one was a tough one for us to figure out because in the house, th they were in two different rooms and they had cut and modified that headboard a little bit so it was no longer with it. But now that we got them together, it's really an amazing looking piece. And I love the way he worked. You could see just these, these mortise ends, how precision they are. Nice chunky headboard with that free form top, it's great. And we got two Tiffany lamps here, and they're both beautiful, but we're going to focus on the acorn because I like green. <laughs> we're going to talk about this green lamp. Uh, boy, a 20-inch Tiffany lamp, this is big and substantial, and if you're looking for a lamp that really makes a statement, uh, this is it. It's got a huge bronze base, but a beautiful green patina, but to find it in this 20-inch shade it is so large and so substantial. And if, Bradley, stand next to that lamp. Let's show them like really what a 20 inch shade looks like. Cause you guys think 20 inches, that's not very big. But when you see it, boom, there it goes. 20 inch Tiffany lamp. And even this other one, if you know, you're looking for a, a, a real Tiffany lamp, this one with the uh, pretty brick, brick pattern shade, the base is absolutely awesome on it. It's got a real arts and crafts looking base, like it's a tree coming out of the ground, sprouting a, a brick top. There you go. But they're both lovely. Hope you like them. So we got a real nice collection of Russian icons here, and these are all from a single uh, estate that we did in, in Greenwich. And there are just some beautiful ones. You don't see them all that often, but most of these are just really exceptional. And you could see they're a mixture of of hand painted and and gold leaf, and there are a couple that like this one, which is mixed metal, probably silver mounted. Here's another one that has a it looks like a base metal cross and hand painted, and then there's even this one over here, which I think is beautiful. The quality of the paint on this one. Yeah, pretty nice. For those of you who love Lalique, this is a great piece. Rene Lalique, the early stuff tends to be opalescent. It's not like the, the frosted crystal that they make today. And it's just got such a beautiful blue hue to the glass. And when you start collecting this, and it comes in a few different variations, but the opalescent is my favorite. And the darker of a background you put it on, the more it appears, that beautiful opalescent color. It's probably made 1910 to 1920. And the pattern, these fish are just the way they repetitively go all around the vase in an infinity pattern is pretty cool. 
So we got lots of little things to look at. Um, this set of gilt bronze, not gilt bronze, they're uh, polychrome bronze. They've been uh, enamel decorated. They're really beautiful. This Tiffany and Company bronze clock set with the uh, Champlevé is absolutely gorgeous. The cherubs are so well executed and fire gilded. Great casting on it. Look at the leaves down here, how well they're done. Nope, this is not plastic. Somebody actually spent time making this. They're really a beautiful piece. This is cute too, a little copper wheel in, uh, engraved container. You can put anything you want in it, but when you think about how this was made, somebody sat there, it's blown crystal, and then they got a cut by hand, that floral bouquet, cut this rib, cut the all of this. I mean, it probably took somebody a whole day's worth of work to make this. I think it's just really underestimated. And this one is sterling silver mounted, just a real cute little piece. Little Sevs vase. These are crown Naples. Everybody th thinks it's Capa de Monte, but really some of the crown Naples pieces, they're good quality. These have a lot of look as a pair of garnitures. The same thing with these. These are Saxony, probably late 19th century. But if you're decorating, that's a lot of color to put on your fireplace mantle next to your Buddha. You should buy that. We have some bronzes. And uh, what a great group of bronzes. Here we have Harriet Fishmith, these three uh, different ones. And this is one of my favorites. This is this is called the Vine. And uh, these are all Gorham Foundry. They were probably made all in the first quarter of the 20th century. But they're beautiful. These women are in such elegant poses and uh, like effortless. Love the waves all on the bottom like she's just leaping out of the ocean trying to touch the sky. But the vine, the way she's just leaning back. Wish I could do that, but I'd probably go ouch my back. And then we have over here a uh, Paul Trembetsky. He's a Russian artist, but I'll tell you what, brings real money. This one is great cask, and it happens to have been done by Russian uh, Roman Bronze Works. And it's a lost wax technique. But she is just so fabulous the way kind of like a flapper dancer and she's just trying to hide her face just in that one moment as she extends her leg. But wow, when Roman's bronze works is, you know, they're they're one of the big firms. They did a lot of castings for Frederick Remington and other major Americans. I thought it was interesting that they did one for this, this Russian manufacturer, this uh, Russian artist, but wow, really, what a beautiful bronze. Oh, we've got something else over here. This is really cool. This is a uh, jade clock. And this one, Bradley, why don't you come over here and tell us about this jade clock? Because, you know, I look at it and I go, oh, it's just a, it, it's a, it's a vintage jade clock. Hey, Bradley. Hello. So this is, uh, it's by Caldwell. He, he was a maker in the early 20th century who took antique, mostly antique Chinese art and made these compilation, the compilation clocks where he put things together, pieces together. So this would have been a pair of spinach jade birds and a mogul style carved uh, bowl that he's transformed into this mantle clock with this fabulous brass base that, that is, is stylistically is, is what he is known for. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. It is pretty awesome. Is this worth much, Bradley? It is. It is. And the jade is old. You know, each individual part is valuable, but as a whole, it's, uh, you just, you don't see all that many fantastic Caldwell pieces. This is worth 50 bucks? <laughs> it's worth a little more than that. <laughs> all right. Hey, what? You're thinking about a unique Christmas gift for somebody? Here you go. If you guys like to gamble, you want to go to the casinos, this is absolutely it's a real slot machine. It's an old one, and it's all mechanical. So if you're tired of all that digital garbage and you just want to have fun, you put a nickel in here, and you pull it down, and there you go. And when you come to the back, I love this machine. It's so cool. It's got this beautiful mechanism in it here. 
<laughs> Bradley, you want to give it a yank? Absolutely. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Yeah, what do we got? Oh, you know what, Bradley? There we go. The mechanism works real nice. There's no key, so you're gonna have to watch your nickels that your kids don't grab them and, and spend them on a pack of gum. But I'll tell you what, it is really a lot of fun. It's all cast aluminum, and then with paint decoration, and it weighs, I don't know, it's gotta weigh at least 100 pounds. Woo! If you guys didn't know this, I have pretty bad luck. I don't like to go gambling because I always lose. Just like this, it looks like I'm gonna spend all my nickels. But at least it's a cheap night at the casino, huh? That was my last nickel. Woo! I am consistent! <laughs> So we have some jewelry to look at. This is a very small sample of a hundred lots that we have between the jewelry in day one and, and day two. But we're gonna look at a couple of pieces and see what we got over here. So we start, we have this beautiful mechanical pocket watch lot number 99. And it's really kind of honey of a piece. We don't get a lot of these. This is enamel decorated and uh, gold plated, but if you guys could see, they actually move. So that's, a, that's really a cool lot. And then lot number 24, we have a diamond and ruby uh, bracelet. It's about three and a half ounces of 18 karat gold. And then it's got a, another uh, about one and a quarter carats of diamonds and rubies. And it is substantial. That's lot number 24. Then what else do we have? We have lot number 178. This is a, uh, you know, I wanted to show you guys, not that this is, you know, so valuable compared to the rest of this, but it's such a great size. It's a big, substantial cocktail ring. It's got about a carat of uh, diamonds on it in 14 karat gold, but it is a real statement piece. Uh, this is another really pretty piece. This is a tourmaline ring. It's lot number 87. It's uh, got a 11 carat tourmaline, and then it's set with another approximately half carat of, of diamond. But, you know, look, if you were looking for an emerald and an emerald like this is, you know, six figures, the tourmaline isn't a bad idea. And it's really, it's really amazing looking in person. Okay, we have this monster, lot number three. Uh, if you're really looking to make a statement, you're gonna do it with this. This is a three and a half carat center stone, five carat total weight. It is uh, set in 18 carat gold. The center stone is a VS1 GH in color. And we do have the GIA certificate for this. This is an estate stone. And it is really impressive. Okay, we have lot number 83, this 18 carat gold and diamond bracelet. This is three ounces of gold. And then it's set with another half carat of diamonds. It's pretty incredible. Great weight. Lot number 83, we have this uh, 18 carat gold and diamond necklace. Again, set with, this one's got about 1.2 carats of diamonds. And the really the color gold is just so beautiful. I, I find that it's just has a different luster than uh, than the ten and the fourteen. But uh, this is about three ounces of gold. We have lot number forty eight. Well, this one, I think this is a great pin. This is a fourteen carat gold set with about a little over four carats of diamonds. Its starting bid is. $1,200 and nobody's bid the $1,200 yet, but look at how big this pin is. It is beautiful. You could wear it as a pendant or a pin. I think it's great. The diamonds, if you rip the diamonds out, the diamonds would be worth $1,200. Okay. We have lot number 34 is this beautiful emerald cut diamond. And this one, we didn't have time. It's from an estate. We didn't have time to get the GIA. But our GIA gemologist did look at it. It's got a two carat center and it's about two and a half carats total weight. It's, it's really a beautiful stone, really clean. If you look at it online, it's in, as clean in person as you could see magnifying those photos online. 
Okay, we have lot number 56. This is a hell of a cocktail ring. It is platinum, diamond, and ruby. It's got about four and a half carat center cabochon ruby. And then you got about another uh, close to a carat worth of diamonds. Current bid on this is uh, eight and a quarter. We have, these are really lovely. Uh, another thing with no bid on it, this is lot number 109, uh, 18 carat gold J hoops. And they're set with about three carats of diamonds. And I thought for sure that these would be, you know, the thousand dollar starting bid. They, they would be way past that, but they're just not. But really a, a great looking pair of uh, fabulous hoops for a thousand dollars, you can't go wrong. We have a classic oyster watch. And you know, this is a great size for a man or a woman. It's it's just perfect. So that Rolex is lot number nine. It's currently at 1950. We have this nice little pair of uh, diamond earrings. These are French Art Deco, diamonds and ruby. There's about a carat worth of uh, ruby and diamond in total between the two. They're set in 18 carat gold. And, you know, they're currently at about $300. And I thought, wow, you know, th this is really kind of a bargain for these. They're big. They're about the size of a nickel each. And they're set with the clip-ons. But you could easily take these to a jeweler and change them. And if you want to have uh, post backs put on them, that's a really easy fix. Now, the last thing I want to show you is this necklace. This is a 64-inch gold necklace. It is 18 karat gold. This is lot number, I think it's 104. It's five ounces of 18 karat gold. So if you want to look like Mr. T, I'll tell you what, you can, you can buy a, a bunch of this stuff and you're really on your way, but it's really, it's a great collection. There's some fabulous jewelry. I didn't have time to pull it all out, but you guys could see it online. This could be sitting in your drawer. Thanks for watching guys. Thanks for watching our video. Please go to blackrockgalleries.com. Scroll through the auction. The sale closes next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, day one closes on Tuesday. A lot of great stuff. All the state fresh. Thanks for bidding. Thanks for watching, guys.